Hi friends, my name is Femi Duoye. In this tutorial, we will understand error handling. There are three things I'll be showing you in this tutorial. The first thing is how to get your customize your error page. Second thing is understand when you have an error, what the error means, and um, how to check where the error is coming from. And thirdly, how to extract your error code and your error message. So um, let's get into it. Right now, the first thing we need to do is we need to customize our error page. So to locate your error page, you need to go from the front end. Right now, I'm working on the front end. I'll go from front end to um, view, to site, to um, error. Yeah, this is where our error is, is being cut from. Our, our error is being declared from this place. Go to your config file from front end, config main. Sorry, main. So this is where it is being declared. We have site error, which is coming from this place. So this is where our error is coming in from. So let's assume we display a page. Um, we display a page. Uh, we click on a page that does not exist. So this error is coming in from this end. So what we have here means um, page not found, error 404, and this is the message as well, page not found, and this is the body. So what you see here are coming from this place. Let's say we just say this error, um, this particular paragraph says, please contact us if you have, um, if you have, Please contact us if you think this is a server error. Thank you. So I'll just say, please contact me if you think whatever. So I'll save and refresh. So it has changed. It has changed. Or better still, we can just remove the message. Refresh. So we have. Uh, the page. So this is where our error is coming in from. So whatever customization, probably based on your um, on the team you are using, you can actually edit them from this page, from from this particular page. So let me go to our team and see if I can extract the four uh, four page from the team. Each um, upper good and four four. So what I need to do is I'll just copy this. And I'll paste here. So our arrow type two. Let me put it here. Oops. This place. Let's remove this particular one. We don't want the logo to appear. Well, let me see. Let's leave it. And we couldn't find a page. This should be the first. So let's list this here, and this is going here. So let's leave the main one the way they are, and refresh our page. So this is what we have. It says page not found. I think we have double. Um, okay. I'll refresh good so we have customized this so now that is how you customize your error page to um, maybe the team or whatever it is you're working on the second thing is for instance if, if maybe you're having an error but you just don't know where the error is coming in from now we have server error and we have other uh, error exception so looking at error exception let's assume I'm trying to access a page that actually does not exist 
there's always this thing at the bottom of um, at the bottom of um, our browser. At the bottom of our browser, which is like this. So which is like this. So let me click on it so that I can see it better. If you look at the at your uh, beneath your browser, maybe it's open or closed. If it's closed, it's um, this would be maybe at the side of your browser here or at this side. So once you click on it, it will expand like this, and you have all this information. You have all this information at the bottom. So the status, if it says two o. Uh, 200 which simply means everything is running fine you have no error but the status currently says 404 which simply means page um, does not exist so in case you have a error or maybe this turn is red meaning something is wrong so clicking on your log when you click on log it shows you everything that happened on that particular page you are trying to load starting from the first page it says um uh, bootstrap with ye log dispatchers load loads um loading module debug it got loaded successfully bootstrap with ye, it got loaded successfully our g has well got loaded successfully our bootstrap for module um bootstrapping as well got loaded successfully no matching url this is where the progress start coming in from but at least it was able to check and discover that there was no matching url um on that we're trying to access we're currently trying to access so the next thing it says, route requested chop.html. This does not exist, but this is where it now encountered that error that makes you not be able to go further to display what you want before it's now rendered the error page for you and everything loaded successfully. But this is exactly where it skips because it could not actually render what we're looking in for. So now looking at the email, at the error, when you are you have an error on your on um, why developing your uh, project? Carefully look at the error you are facing, because your answer or the secrets or the trace to your error, or to your error, is written in the error you are facing. Sometimes you just see a maybe a orange, um, or, or on an orange screen or a red screen, I would just be like, oh, this thing is true and error. We don't care to look at the error we're currently having. So here yeah, it says unable to resolve the request shop dot which simply means the URL we're trying to access really does not exist. So with that, you should be able to discover um, to know where problem is coming from and when you're getting a problem. So just always watch out for this in case you think something went wrong. Look at the status beneath your browser on this and you should be able to know that something went wrong clicking on log then you know where the problem got encountered while loading the the page so i'll go back and so one other thing i want us to i want to explain is how to get error code let's say uh, we have error code there error code there which is 404 um, four, four. we're currently having 404 four error but what if we're trying to access um, a page that we're not supposed to uh, have access to let's say the error we want is um, access for building let's go to back here um, I'll look at this it's called admin Right now, I'm currently logged in, and I should be able to access this. So now, let me log out at the back end and click on this again. Well, I'm still able to access it. So let's click on create products. Well, I'm still able to access it. But better still, let me use, um, I think there's been some changes while I'm migrating from my former system to this um, system. Um, but I'll check into that later on. But let's assume I want to extract, just in case you want to extract just the code of the error you're currently, you currently encounter while accessing your page. Meaning, you just want to extract this code alone. And you want to extract the message as well separately. So in case maybe you're having... Um, error uh, forbidding 
forbid access forbidden, which is error 403. If I'm right, let me check on 403. 43 means error forbidden. Yes, it means a forbidden error. So So how do I extract this and this together? So there is this um, code I wrote that uh, that that I, I I use sometimes, which allows me to be able to extract um, the error code separate and the message separate. So this is not a regular um, method, but just the code I wrote, which I'm using. So it is like this. So I will just make sure that. Um, it's do what I can. Maybe he currently has a, a function that takes care of that for me, but I really don't know. But as soon as I'm able to get that, I'll just, um, I'll try to do a tutorial on that as well. That will pass the message across to, to you guys. So, So I will, as, uh, I will display the code. Um, the message, the error message, let me call it message so let me say string to lower in case i want to i want the uh, message to be in lower case and also i will trim it to be sure that um, spaces and other things are being taken care of and then i will now use my substring string string reader So let's see what we have here. So we have our error here, error code there. We have our message here. So let's say I want to kill this page just to be sure that this is exactly what we have. And also I will help you, um, a break in between. So this is our, our error code and this is our message. So um, one other thing that I think I need to show you guys before I go is um, one of the things I need to show you guys is that um, I need to, um, let's say I want to have an internal server error. Uh, let me make use of, um, let's say sites, which is, I'm looking at the home page. Looking at the home page, so there are some stuff that I'm supposed to. There are some value, some variable I'm supposed to pass into the view. So let's say I made a mistake and I make a mistake here intentionally, and and I refresh. Now this is another type of error. You probably this is the main error page you uh, mostly encounter. So in this case now you need to really start from the top here and know what you are actually facing. It says undefined variable product, meaning we are calling product in this particular view, but it is actually not passed in into the view. So from this page, so it means 
we are on this page on this um search index we have a product used in there but you have to scroll down to know where that page is being loaded from also we have a product being loaded there but the product is not passed into this through this place we're supposed to pass in the product through this place but it is actually not passed in so this is where our error is coming from so you you have actually doing such a way that the places in which the error is coming in from or maybe the error is being referenced or the variable you're supposed to use where it is being referenced but the error is uh, it's bringing uh, it's making causing an error for a program everywhere will be referenced on your error page so when you check this you get to know that if this is right or wrong so from this page you tend to, you get to see that oh this is where my error is coming from this is p r o d u c t s instead of having a product so in that case you can just um, maybe correct your error and you have a working program